Okay, we're now going to do reading Luke 20, chapter 20. And it came to pass that on one of those days, as he taught the people in the temple and preached the gospel, the chief priests and scribes came upon him up, yeah, upon him with the elders. And spake unto him, saying, Tell us, by what authority does thou these things? And who is he that gave thee this authority? And he answered and said unto them, I will ask, ask you one thing, and answer me. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If if we shall say from heaven he will say why then believe ye not him not but and if we say of men all the people will stone us for they uh, be persuaded that John was a prophet and they answered that they could not tell whence it was and Jesus said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. And then began he to speak to the people this parable. A certain man planted a vineyard and led it forth to and led it forth to the husbandmen, and went into a far country for a long time. And at the season he sent a servant to the husbandmen that they should give him of the fruit of the vineyard. But the husbandmen beat him and sent him away empty. And again he sent another servant, and they beat him also, and entreated him shamefully, and sent him away empty. And again he sent a third. And they wounded him also, and cast him out. Then said the Lord of the vineyard, What shall I do? I will send my beloved son. It may be they will reverence him when they see him. But when the husbandmen saw him, they reasoned among themselves, saying, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, that the inheritance may be ours. So they cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. What therefore shall the Lord of the vineyard do unto them? He shall come and destroy these husbandmen and shall give the vineyard to others. And when they heard it, they said, God forbid. And he beheld them and said, What is this then that is written? The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And the chief priests and the scribes the same hour sought to lay hands on him, and they feared the people, for they perceived that he had spoken this parable against them. And they watched him and sent forth spies, which should feign themselves just men, that they might take hold of his words, that so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. And they asked him, saying, Master, we know that thou sayest and teachest rightly, and neither acceptest thou the person of any, but teachest the ways of God truly. Is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar or not? Or no, excuse me. And he perceived their craftiness and said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Show me a penny, whose image and superscription hath it. 
And they answered and said, Caesar's. And he said unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's, and unto God the things which be God's. And they could not take hold of his words before the people. And they marveled at his answer and held their peace. Then came to him certain of the Sadducees, which deny that there is any resurrection. And they asked him, saying, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If any man's brother die, having a wife, and he die without children, that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. There were therefore seven brethren, and the first took a wife and died without children, and the second took, his, took her to wife, and he died childless, and the third took her, and in like manner the seven also, and they left no children and died. Last of all, the, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife of them is she? For seven had her to wife. And Jesus answering and said unto them, The children of this world marry and are given in marriage. But they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain the world and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage. Neither can they die any more, for they are equal unto the angels." and are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. Now that the dead is raised, even Moses showed at the bush when he, was, when he calleth the Lord of God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. For he is not a God of the dead, but the God of but of the living, excuse me, for all live unto him. Then certain of the scribes answering said, Master, thou hast well said. And after that, they durst not ask him any question at all. And he said unto them, How say they that Christ is David's son? And David himself saith in the book of Psalms, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thy enemies thy footstool. David therefore calleth him Lord. How is he then his son? Then in the audience all the people he said unto the disciples, did I say that right? Then in the audience of all the people, he said unto the disciples, Beware of the scribes, which desire to walk in long robes and love greetings in the, in the market markets and the highest seats in the synagogues and of the chief rooms at, the, at feasts, which devour widows' houses and, sh and for a show make long prayers, the same shall receive great damnation. <clears throat> Chapter 21 of Luke. And he looked up and saw a rich man casting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in thither two mites. And he said, Of a truth I say unto you, that this poor widow has cast in more than they all. For all these have their abundance cast in unto the offerings of God, but she of her uh, penury hath cast in all the living that she had. And as some spake of the temple, how it was adorned with 
goodly stones and gifts, he said, As for these things which ye behold, the days will come in which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? What sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And this is us going to align with uh, what Matthew 24, and uh, I can't remember which one, somewhere in the 20s, 21, 20, 20 21 of Mark, somewhere around there. I'm sure I'm getting those chapters wrong. Anyways, always get them wrong. And he said, Take heed that ye uh, be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. The time draweth nigher. Go ye not therefore after them. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then, see, then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Not that, and so what are the nations in the Bible? The nations of Israel. And the kingdoms, for that matter. Or kingdom against kingdom. Mind you, it could also be the kingdom of Rome and the kingdom of, uh, of Israel, right? And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilence and fearful signs and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on who? The disciple, his apostles that he's speaking to directly, not to you and I in 2021. Not to say it's not going to happen to us. I'm saying it's not talking to you and he's not talking to you and I. This is a very much a dead giveaway in which this is supposed to happen. So once again, he's saying to specifically his disciples, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, my disciples, delivering you, my disciples, up to the synagogues and into prisons and being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you, my disciples, my apostles, for a testimony. Settle it, therefore, in your hearts, my disciples and apostles. Not to media, uh, meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you, my apostles and disciples, a mouth and wisdom which all your ad ad adversaries, whose adversaries? His apostles and disciples' adversaries, and shall not be able to gain, gainsay nor resist. And ye, my apostles and disciples, shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolk and friends and some of you my disciples and my apostles shall they cause to be put to death and you are not the disciples and the apostles he's talking to right now nor in Matthew 24 nor in any else in this book And you should be grateful. Ye, my apostles and disciples, shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not an hair of your, my apostles and disciples' heads perish. The ones he's speaking to directly. And in your, my disciples and apostles that I am speaking to directly, 
patience possess ye your souls. And when ye, my disciples and apostles, shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, and that's exactly what happened at the end of that generation, when Rome did compass all of the city of Jerusalem with armies, and then know that the desolation thereof is nine. That means near. That doesn't mean 2,000 years later. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Now it doesn't say, and then those are in Nashville, Tennessee, and Lexington, Kentucky, and... Uh, of Dallas, Texas, and L.A., uh, California. No, it doesn't say that. It says Judea. And he's speaking specifically to his disciples, his apostles, of what's going to happen to them in their life. This is extremely important. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter thereinto. In other words, stay away from Jerusalem and all of Judea, especially when the Roman military soldiers or legions show up. And for these be the days of vengeance, that all things which were written may be fulfilled. So everything must be fulfilled at this point. And they may be, and meaning they will be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with children, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distresses in the land, and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the machine guns. No, the sword. And shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trotted down uh, by the Gentiles. Until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Meaning the destruction of Israel and Jerusalem. And the rebellion. It had already begun, apparently, prior to Jesus even showing up, I guess. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distresses, distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them. For fear, for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then, they, then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud of power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift your heads, for your my apostles and disciples' redemption draws near. 9. And he spake to them a parable. Behold, a fig tree and all trees. And if you just go through this book, and if you just take yourself out of it, stop being so egotistical and so frightened and so fearful and so full of doubt, and you just accept the fact that all this did happen back then, regardless of whether the history books recognize it or not. And remember that 99.999% of all that's ever happened since then, the history books don't recognize either. Your history will not be recognized for the most part unless you write it down and somebody cherishes and keeps your journal for some reason. Most people's histories... Are, won't be recognized at all. In fact, if you do have books written about you for some reason, it probably would be greatly embellished, uh, exaggerated. 
right? But when it comes to this, it's very straightforward about what's going on and when it's supposed to happen and who it's to. And as Christians, it's time to grow up. We need to grow up. We don't have any street cred anymore because we're not being honest with the text. And if we can't be honest with what God said, what Jesus said, then why should anybody take us serious? Think about what I'm saying. Now, I know it's disturbing. And I know if I'm lucky, two of you are going to hear this. But the two of you that hear this, hear me out. It's good news that everything was fulfilled by 70 AD. It's not good news that all of Christendom has lied about that for all these centuries. But it's good news that it was all fulfilled. Why? Because it was all fulfilled by you having abiding faith in Jesus, guess what happens? While you may endure the misery and hardship of this place, afterwards, when you pass away, your place is the hope and the wish is that we will be part, we'll be grafted into New Jerusalem, not the Lake of Fire. That's the good news. And most of you who call yourself Christians expect to go to heaven after this life, right? Well, the only reason why that's going to happen is because Jesus fulfilled all things. Not because you're going to outwit him. Or your pastor's going to outwit him. Or your pope's going to outwit him. Or anybody else is going to outwit him. And if you simply just read it for what it says, instead of making a game out of it, it would go greatly and go it's just amazing how drastic the world would change in a positive direction in the physical realm and in death, definitely in the spiritual realm there's no reason to be ashamed of the fact that Jesus fulfilled all things what happens though when you come to this realization the people are supposed to be your brothers and sisters in Christ are going to reject you and throw you under the bus and after a while, it's just, what do you do? Just to throw up your hands and say, you know what? The congregation that I want to belong to, Lord Jesus, is your congregation. The people that believe in what you said and did. And if I have no congregation around me, and flesh and blood, people I can talk to, I'm still going to put my faith in you. There might not be a church to go to. There might not be a brick and mortar place to go to. There might not be some group to go to. But there still is you, Jesus. And I can go to you. Does that make me, should that make me a popular man? Absolutely not. And Jesus promised to his own disciples and apostles that the world would have enmity with them. Therefore, they would be at enmity with them. Do we think that we can be in any better of a circumstance after all these years? Well, that's just naive. Don't you think? Hear what I have to say. Hear what hundreds, if not thousands, of before me have had to say. It's been fulfilled, folks. Jesus already showed up. So when you hear all this nonsense about a second coming and the world's going to end and... And it's last days and all that. They're lying to you. The world's not going to end. It's not the last days. Although it really goes really greatly in the hands of certain groups of people. Monarchies and dukes and billionaires and the oligarchs of this world. To convince you that that's the case. To keep you off kilter and in fear and worrying about something that's not true. And not doing something about what's really going on. I would not be surprised 500 years ago. With the uh, Reformation that many Christians started to realize. Oh, Jesus already showed up. What do we do about this? Well, if we can't speak the truth in Eurasia. Maybe we can speak the truth in America. And there was probably a season which they had a chance to speak the truth. But then soon they put the kibosh on that. And so now it's always as it always has been. The remnant really is small. And it's not, you know, 
that I is more special than anyone else. I've gone through living hell to get to this point. And I accept it, Lord Jesus. You fulfilled all things. Thank you, Jesus. And after this life, and it's been a brutal life for me, I can't wait to be back with you, Ian. If it's just a moment to see you, and nothing more than that, and, I, and as far as New Jerusalem, maybe I'm not worthy to be there. Maybe I'm not. I don't think I am. I know I'm not. But you know what? Maybe to be the outside of this, the, the, your kingdom. Or maybe just a moment, just once. To be in the way of the truth of life. I'm so sick of all the lies, God. I'm sick of the lies in my head and the lies in my heart. I'm sick of all the lies around me. I'm sick of all the anger and rejection and pettiness, bitterness, shallowness within myself and those around me. Truly, God, thank you for my son. Thank you for him getting the reward of being the most creative word. He's got great imagination. He's a wonderful boy. He's put up with me. And you please bless him, God. A million times more you blessed me. And everybody else's children for that matter. And help us, those of us who call ourselves followers of you, Lord Jesus. <coughs> help us. What the heck? I'm wheezing. Help us, God, to have the faith to follow you and not other people. And give us the strength. And we're going to need a lot of strength, and a lot of people are going to need a lot of strength, God. More strength than they could ever imagine. More strength than they can even comprehend. Give us the courage to do the right thing and follow you and not follow other people. He spake to, to them in a parable. Before the fig tree, all the trees, when they are now shoot forth, ye, my disciples and apostles, see and know of your, my disciples and apostles, that I'm speaking directly to 2,000 years ago, own selves that summer is nine at hand. So likewise, ye, my disciples and apostles that I am speaking to directly 2,000 years ago, when ye, my disciples and apostles, see these things come to pass, know ye, my disciples and apostles, that the kingdom of God is not at hand. Not 2,000 years later. Not 2,100 years later. Is that the right word? No. He says this to them specifically, not to you and I. Verily I say unto you, my disciples and apostles, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. And God forbid it didn't happen because if it didn't happen, then every single one of us to call ourselves Christians are fools. But my faith is in the fact that it did happen. And it, this he said specifically again in another one of the Gospels that it would happen and his apostles and his disciples that he was speaking to directly to it would happen in their generation. Not 2,000 years later. It's time to grow up, brothers and sisters in Christ. Don't argue with me anymore because don't you're fooling yourself. You're arguing with Jesus' own words that was given to us by accordingly by the apostles. And this says specifically the same thing in Matthew and in Mark, and now Luke, and then we'll see the same thing in John's Olivet Discourse, which is the book of Revelation. 
and everything that they've been telling you and I and everyone else for generations since that the world's going to end that the second coming is going to happen in the next generation and the next generation the next is a lie and they know it's a lie and you know why I know it's a lie? Because I'm not that smart and I figure this out. I figured this out, folks. And I know you can figure this out, too. The thing is, do you have enough strength? Because I barely have enough. Do you have enough strength to put your faith in Jesus? Have abiding faith in Him and His words. Not in the Pope's. Not in the pastors, not in some booksellers, not in some Nephilim peddler, not in all the people in the world. Do you have enough faith, to put, enough courage and conviction to put your faith in Jesus and his apostles, what they said? And if you don't, fair be it. Fair, it's, it's, it's understandable. But the gig is what it is. And it's made very clear over and over again what the gig is. Talk about drawing you out of Mystery Babylon. Follow Jesus. That will draw you out of Mystery Babylon. Verily I say unto you, my apostles and disciples standing right before me, this whose generation, not so many 2,000 years from now, his generation, his apostles' generation, the disciples' generations are standing right there before him. All shall not, excuse me, this generation shall not pass away to all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So, does that say specifically heaven and earth shall or did or is going to? Uh, you know, this is Hebrewism here in expression. Now, the Jews would see the heaven and earth back then would be the temple. That's where heaven and earth met. And did it pass away? It sure did. And all of Jerusalem and all of Israel for that matter. Uh, did his has Jesus' words passed away since then? No. Have people paid attention to listen to what he had to say? For the most part, no. Whose fault is that? Is that Jesus and God's fault? No. It's it's ours. How much do we want God? Or how much do we want to belong to some church or some organization to be loved and be a big shot and be honored by all these people around you and by the way we know what Jesus said over and over again about those who love the world more than God it's a bummer it's a tough thing to, and it's us well the hope is even to this day that we go through all this heartache and pain and suffering for the hope the reward, the pearl's great, a pearl of great price to get a chance to be with God. And um, and if we think, if we're so arrogant to think that our generation is all about prosperity and having big fancy cars and making buildings and fancy this, that, and the other and acting like Mr. Big Shot. and No. No, no, no. The world's at enemy with God. And it was an enemy with his apostles and his disciples then. And is it really reasonable uh, 2,000 years later that they would not be an enemy with you if you believe in Jesus? I don't think so. I think, I think it's reasonable at all. I think we have to go and every single one of us is bear our cross. And just as it was back then, it was the religious folks that persecuted God Almighty and his apostles and his prophets and his disciples. You think it's going to be any different today? Nope. By the way, religious folks come in many different forms. 
And the funny thing is, I'm not religious at all. I just believe in Jesus. I believe it was in this book. But you... I haven't stepped into church in years now. And every time I ever stepped into church since I came to the Lord, it's been nothing but torment. I don't plan on stepping into any one of these brick and mortar things called a church. Now, as far as a church or the congregation of God, well, who's to say I'm not speaking to or the congregation of God right now. Maybe it's just one of you that's listening to this right now. And you're part of that congregation along with me. But don't forget about the angelic realm and the heavenly realm. And, you know, because, you know, we since we're not denying Jesus. He's not, he's promised, you know, if he's, the hope is he's not going to deny us. Or Jesus don't deny us because, please, because we don't have any help outside of you. Literally. I mean, every stupid job. I mean, we watch everything we do. It's just, oh. It's just ex ex exploitation and extortion and deception and lies and conning each other, robbing each other. It's, it's, just, it's a criminal racket. And I'm, I don't like it, God. I don't like being here. I can't find a place in that for me. I don't see a place in me in this here at all. And I'm sure I'm not alone in this. I'm sure there's a few other people that have a heart and a conscience still to recognize that there's a lot of things that just aren't right about what's going on in this world. And I think it all stems with the fact that we can't even be honest about your own words. Your own words that we can't even be honest with, God. And the moment we are honest with it, all oh, the vipers show up all over the place. Man! And it's amazing. They all take their turns. First it's some group of dudes from Africa. Then it's from India. Then it's some dudes from America. Then it's some dudes from Europe. And then it's go back to Africa and India. And, then, and you're just like, good God. It's what it says is what it says. Wake up. I know why you don't want to hear it and you don't want to follow it. I know damn well why you don't want to hear this. It's because you're afraid of losing everything in this world because you love this world more than God. Well, I understand. Believe me, I understand. And believe me, I'm not better than you. And the only reason I've gotten to this point is because God, I guess, cares enough about me that he's crushing me like an ant. He's destroying me and my ego. We talked earlier about the the stone, right? Oh, fall upon the stone or the stone. Turn the dust. I mean, I tell you one thing. I put my faith in Jesus, whatever it takes. And I'm not a very. And believe me, when I say that, don't come showing up my doorstep and say, "Wow, this guy is the greatest example that there ever was about putting his faith in Jesus," because I'm not. I'm one of those sinners that the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the scribes were chastising and mocking and ridiculing Jesus for hanging out with. You don't want to... The average brother and sister in Christ doesn't want to hang out with me. They don't. Mind you, the average Satanist doesn't want to hang out with me. And the average anybody doesn't want to hang out with me. But that's okay. Because there's nothing I can do. Well, at this point, it's okay. Because there's nothing I can do about it. But it, it's not been okay for many a year. It's been very hard on me. But my hope is that, and I'm not asking for sympathy or anything, that my hope is the reward, the pearl of great price, to be in the presence of Jesus. And the truth is life. And it's just what I have to go through. It's what I have to go through. 
if I have to go through the sickness and misery and losing out and then spending time with my son and going through all the wonderful experiences that a man and a son gets to go th go through and go fishing and hunting and camping and all that stuff and and and, and in order to be with God, then so be it. I know I have to stay close to Jesus. I have to stay close to God for my own son's sake. It was just more important than how many times I go hunting and fishing with him. How much money we make or where we go. What I teach him outside of this fundamental truth is an empty, empty, empty shallow second best and believe me i i i understand i see the majesty the beauty of god's creation and i see it was amazing to go out hike 10 miles into the mountains crystal clear streams and mount and lakes and to be so far away from all this madness and i wish i could go there i wish i had my own farm with my own animals and sort of the babbling brooks. I wish, I wish, I wish. But it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Saying that, there's something better than that waiting for me anyways. And I gotta tell you something. If you read the book of Enoch and what's it like on the other side. It's a hell of a lot of a more cooler place than this place. As cool as this place is or can be. It's a million times. A quadrillion times better. And the funny thing is. It's for all eternity. An endless journey. And I'm sure. Just like that time when I saw that thing that we called a Bigfoot crawling up that ravine. In 2017 with that Crow Indian medicine man. Where he shouldn't have been there. As... As scarred me as tattooed me as emblazoned in me forever and eternity or at least for now in the flesh I should say maybe not that for eternity but I definitely the 54 years that I've lived here in this God forsaken place <clears throat> for all eternity when I'm in the presence of God. Some way, somehow. This tattoo, this branding, this mark of living in this place for the past 54 years. Will be emblazoned upon me and my spirit. And I'll remember for all eternity of what God did for me. And he gave me the greatest gift of all, which is not being popular, not being liked by anybody, not by making money, and not, not by having any, you know, anything for that matter. Even decent food. It's actually being just being... It's being with God and it's way the truth. And all that is of Him. And that's my hope my faith is. Now, if I'm wrong about it, I'm wrong about it. I am like thousands and millions of others before me. <clears throat> I'm wrong. But I wanted to know God, and I've wanted to know God for a long time. That journey started sometime about when I was a Mormon missionary. 30 frickin' years plus ago. 
when my companion asked me, Mike, how about you? Why don't you share your testimony about God? And I looked honestly at the person that I was giving the discussion to and I said, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even know who God is. Of course, it ruined that discussion and all that, but I was being honest and I'm sure God rewarded me before that. And the whole world started to change from that point forward. And in order to bail me out of the clutches and the grip of Mystery Babylon, I had to go through an all heck of a lot of misery like the wayward son eating the husk of the pig pen and making a whole hell of a lot of ex mistakes and go through a whole hell of a lot of pain to get to this point. And I know that there's a lot of pastors and there's a lot of priests and there's a lot of popes there's a lot of ministers and there's a lot of this, that, and the other know damn well what I'm talking about and they don't want to go through what I went through, what I've gone through. And I'm not even condemning you, man. I'm not even blaming you. But I will tell you this. If you keep on mocking Jesus and his word for a paycheck... If you keep on twisting his words in order for a paycheck and to be loved by the group, the elders, and your authorities, you're going to get what Jesus promised. You know that, right? And in the end, day, in the end of the day, you're no different than a witch, than a wizard and a warlock. Heck, that's the reason why so many witches and wizards and warlocks feel so at home hanging out in Christian churches and Catholic churches and, and etc. Because with what it is. If you're not going to be honest with what Jesus says, what do you think is going to happen, dudes? What do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? Jesus told you what's going to happen. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Those who have abiding faith in Jesus and what he said and did, and those who are ashamed of what Jesus said and did, he will be ashamed of. If he said that to his own apostles and disciples right in front of his face, do you think that's not going to somehow apply to you? I understand many of you are going to go, I don't understand. I just hope God wakes you up and gives you the strength and courage to endure what you're going to have to endure. Because some of you are like from in your teens, you're in your 20s. And you know this to be true. And it drives you away. The fear of being judged and the pain and it's bad enough as it is. Huh. Yeah. Think about what I'm saying. Now, when he keeps on saying you, 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 ye, you, and he's talking to his disciples and, and his uh, apostles and that generation, then you have to then start dealing with whole earth and all this other stuff. And what does that really mean? And how much of that is Jewish Hebrewism and figurative speech? And how much is that, you know, what's what? At some point, you're going to have to make your decision. And you're going to find a lot of these whole earth and all that could be the same thing as, well, all of Jerusalem, all of Israel, all of <laughs> the age... The world's not going to end, folks. And they, you know what? You, that's a good thing. You know why that's a good thing? Because that gives other people a, a hundred generations from now the chance to accept Jesus or not. Understand, there's eight billion people in this world. 
There ain't going to be that many out of 8 billion people that are going to follow Jesus. Do you understand that? For every one that does, there's probably a million that won't. But it's everybody's choice to a certain degree and a whole heck of a lot of mercy from God whether that is the case or not in the first place. So I pray that God will have great mercy upon every one of you. They will open your eyes and you will give, you give, he will give you the strength to follow him. I'm talking about Jesus now. I'm not talking about Lucifer or whatever that is. Whatever the god of this world is. Which I don't know how it can be because Lucifer was the name of a man. I give Whenever I hear somebody say, oh yeah, and Lucifer tempted Adam and Eve, I'm like, okay. We, we can close the book now when it comes to that person because they totally have missed... Uh, A lot of it's Lucifer was the name of the king of Babylon during at the Babylonian woe. It's always the desire of every king and prince and big shot and president and every egotistical billionaire and trillionaire, every egotistical rock and roll star, and every egotistical dude or woman in the first place is to to be God. It's the human condition without God is to want to be God. And it was talking specifically about the king of Babylon. And they called himself Lucifer. Son of the morning. Which is not the same thing as the morning star. And it really it doesn't mean the same thing even close. But you just have to think that one through. Son of the morning. And, and the morning star. Two different things. Even morning and the morning star are two different things, aren't they not? <sighs> it's, uh, it's painful. It's like being beaten over the head over and over again with all these guys that lie and lie and lie and lie and lie. And lie. And it never ends. God, help me not to lie. Lord Jesus, help me to do what's right before you. All praise and glory go to you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for my son. Thank you for anybody who hears this. I guess we'll finish this up again or read into that again. Remember, this is the Alpha Discourse of Luke, don't forget there's, an, there's a discourse of Mark that you can find, and also in Matthew. And John's is the book of Revelation, and it has everything to do with John's and his fellow apostles' generation, and zero to do with you. Except for one and the most important thing of all, and the most mer and God made He became so merciful in this whole thing. Instead of playing church and religion and trying, you know what? And listen, if you just have abiding faith in what He said and did, that's the key. Not playing church, what He said and did, not what your pastor said He said and did, not what somebody else said He said He did. And don't forget, this is allegedly what His apostles and his disciples who were with him said he said and did. And that's all we got. That's the closest thing we got. Now, either that's legit or it's not. And if it's not, then it's all make-believe. And we might as well be the savages that we are. Walking around in suit and ties. And our little fancy outfits pretending to be something other than what we are. Which is tragic.